Okay, first item on the agenda is closed session portion of the meeting. May I have a mover and seconder for a motion to go into closed session under the authorities as printed is in the agenda. Councillor Tedesco. Councillor Muir. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Okay, council came out of closed session at 6.59. Council discussed uh, some potential litigation in closed session. Time being 7.01, I'd like to call this meeting to order. First, we have the traditional territory acknowledgement followed by a moment of silence. A council of the Township of Red Rock hereby acknowledges that we are on the traditional territory of the Robinson Superior Treaty and that the land we gather on is home of the Red Rock Indian Band, the Anishinaabek and the Métis people. Administration advises that there are no amendments to the agenda. Do any members of council wish to make amendments to the agenda? Seeing none, can I have a mover and seconder for motion to approve the agenda as presented? Councillor Mayor, Councillor McDonald. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Are there any declarations of interest to disclose? Um, I have to declare a conflict of interest on agenda item 6.6. .6. Okay, it's noted. Okay, tonight we have Lisa Prentice and Lisa Page here with the presentation from MNP Digital regarding the Township website and online services delivery review final report. Welcome. Thank you very much. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Excellent. Um, I'm just going to share my screen if you'll bear with me one moment. There we go. I hope you can see my screen okay. Yes, we can. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for uh, having us this evening. Uh, my name is Lisa Prentice. I'm a, a partner at MNP Digital, and um, we are here. I'm here with my colleague uh, Lisa Page, and we are here to present to you um, the summary findings uh, from our work with the Township of Township of Red Rock um, around the website and online service delivery review project. Um, so tonight we'll do a quick overview, um, present the findings, talk about uh, the vision statement that was discussed and our recommendations and implementation plan, and then have a few minutes available for any questions that may come up. So the project uh, that we undertook with the township um, was meant to review, ass assess, and identify opportunities to modernize the the township's website and online services. Really think, looking at opportunities where um, the website could be enhanced in order to, to help support uh, the services that you provide to your community today. And so thinking through things like how the website is being used, um, the information that it delivers, and how uh, your community and, and stakeholders would like to use it in, moving into the future. Bit of background. Um, so uh, we were asked to uh, conduct a review of the website. So we had some of our user experience professionals take a look at the site um, and review its usability, how easy it was to find information, how easy it was to navigate and, and use the, the site itself, um, as well as the type of information that it was displaying. We also had the opportunity to meet with a number of uh, township staff members um, responsible for the maintenance of 
the site as well. Um, we had on-site uh, workshops and con conducted uh, surveys with the community to understand their needs and how they would like to use the site going forward. Um, it was an excellent opportunity for us to gather their insights, hear their stories about um, how they use the site, any challenges that they ran into, and things to think about as you move forward with redesigning the site. Um, this project is the first step in, a, in the process of uh, moving forward with the the redesign and development of the site with the objective to make it more user-friendly um, and easier to maintain um, from a staff perspective as well. So some of the key takeaways from those interactions, from the, the feedback that we received was that in the future, um, definitely would like to have a more accessible, mobile-friendly and um, visually appealing website uh, that uh, was that would be easy for uh, users to navigate and would provide an, a channel for that would support in-person processes and services. So being an information source to, to people and being able to offer some services um, through digital means. The, uh, the benefits of this would be um, an opportunity to find some efficiencies. Uh, tasks that are very manual um, have an opportunity to move those, particularly around information gathering um, by users, have an opportunity to use the website more effectively to provide that information when people need it. Uh, thus uh, providing staff with more time um, through more streamlined digital processes. Uh, just to reiterate that, um, these were some of the key findings that we saw. Um, so the first one being that many of the uh, user design principles that were used in the development of the website as it is today are outdated and there are new practices that could help modernize the experience, uh, making it more intuitive for users thinking about your navigation and, and how people are able to find information and improving that. Um, there are some, some key best practices that could be applied to make it more user-friendly, more relevant to, the, to how users um, expect and, and, and want to find information. Accessibility is a huge uh, topic these days, particularly you want to be able to ensure that people with of all abilities to will have access to the to the content on the website so meeting standards that would support people who have visual impairments or have mo mobility impairments that make using websites difficult that may need to use screen readers for example have access to that information through the website as well uh, thinking about the language that is used so that how content is presented, the, the way that the messages are portrayed on the website um, is, a, is also an opportunity to, uh, to improve the website, um, make it more understandable and help guide people uh, to complete particular tasks. From a digital services perspective, there's a significant opportunity there for you to offer more online services to help people who may not have the time to visit the township office during the during business hours. And so giving them an opportunity to use the website to conduct uh, certain services um, could provide them with a greater opportunity and, and ease of connecting with, with the township. And then of course, thinking of, of the site from a staff perspective, um, there, definitely opportunities to improve the the platform the software that is actually being used to support the website and making it more um, uh, supportive to the to the people that are maintaining the content make it easier um, for them to update content when they need to and thus also looking at the technical issues where content is 
not available or a feature within the site is broken, giving them um, more ability to address those issues. Um, a number of these things I've already covered, but uh, I think the, the biggest one that we, we wanted to highlight was that there are opportunities to improve the site. There are a number of issues that we have identified that um, could be addressed through a redesign um, that would make this site more user focused and as well technically um, address some of the issues that are currently being seen. One of the big things that I think is very important in, in today's society is around how the website works on a mobile device. And so we want to make sure that the experience that someone has, the information that they have access to from their, their phones, from their tablets, is delivered in such a way that really supports them finding the information and so that they don't necessarily have to be at a computer screen in order to do so. And so there are um, design principles that you can follow to help support that um, from a technology perspective. And, and as we were working with your, with your team, um, we came up with this future state vision that they would like to see achieved. And so really it's around um, being able to provide the Red Rock community with a modern user-friendly and accessible website with online services, enabling a meaningful service experience for stakeholders, including staff, residents, visitors, businesses, and investors. Now, in terms of our recommendations going forward, um, we are recommending that uh, you go through a process of redesigning the website to address the issues around navigation, content, and language um, in order to better support residents, tourists, businesses, and potential investors. The key is to ensure that you have the ability to maintain accurate and up-to-date information and making sure that it's an intuitive and accessible platform. Now, recognize that you do want to, there, there is a, a desire to move to uh, more online services and that would help to streamline and digitize some of the current processes. And so identifying what those, those key uh, processes could be that could be, that could be digitized um, and help provide some efficiencies around, uh, around service delivery um, will be an important element of that. So when we look at um, what we love to call the, the journey that someone goes through um, with, and how the website can help support the, 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 the delivery of services, we think about um, how they want to access information either through the website or through their mobile, app, mobile uh, device and the types of information that, that is going to be important to them, the types of services that are going to be uh, available to them, such as book, being able to book for the marina or being able to make payments. Um, and not to say that the website is going to uh, replace the other ways that you support your, your community, but as an enabler, um, as a supporting mechanism in order to help uh, you deliver services through your other channels. So the in-person uh, interactions that you have, your, your telephone uh, services, email or, or mail as well. They all work together in order to be able to deliver services to the community and must, and you wanna ensure that the experience, the information that is delivered across all of these, these different service delivery, delivery channels is, a, is consistent and, and meaningful for your, for your community. In terms of an implementation plan, um, we came, we, we, we looked at it from six different perspectives. Um, and these are meant to help identify the foundational elements that you need to address in order to be able to 
complete the, the redesign and update of the website. So we looked at it from a governance perspective, uh, a data process and data procurement, design and implementation, management and oversight, and change management. Now this slide, lots of, lots of text on it, but it just provides a, a bit of more detail as to what each of these, these work streams involve. So the first one being governance. So setting, setting uh, the standards and policies and guidelines that you need to have in place in order to be able to guide where you, how you want to use the website and online services going forward, as well as any um, brand or uh, design standards that need to be followed in order to best represent the, the township. Uh, also thinking about how the data and processes um, that will be supported through the website and how you want to manage your data, how you want to protect that data, um, making sure that you have the right processes and technology in place in order to be able to support that. Vendor procurement, um, that's the process of going through and, and uh, hiring a vendor to help you design and implement the new website and online services platform. And then of course, um, that implementation phase. So designing and implementing the new, the new website and platform. And in, in particular, making sure that there's training and support for, for key stakeholders. One of the things that we did here um, in our in, uh, discussions with, with staff was that there is a gap around the training that was provided by the, uh, the previous uh, developer of, of the website and making, and making sure that that knowledge transfer uh, happens to, so that um, whomever is going to be ma managing the website has the right tools and information they need in order to be able to properly do that. Uh, finally, uh, next on the list was management and oversight. So making sure that as you're thinking through um, what the goals of the website is going to be, the strategy, um, the key outcomes that you have that oversight and you can always uh, link back to those, um, that direction in order to make sure that you're achieving your goals and your expectations coming from the, from the website. And then of course that change management side and making sure that you have um, the right communications, the right training, the right support in place um, so that uh, you understand where you are within this process and how the team needs to be supported in order to make it successful. Uh, this final slide is really um, just a summary of the anticipated savings that could, that. Uh, could come out of updating and redesigning the website. And so we've, we've summarized them based on uh, new services that could be, uh, or services that could transition to more online services, um, such as the payment, payment for different, uh, different uh, utilities and taxes, fees, memberships, dog licenses, for example, um, the permit application process, uh, being able to book uh, and reserve for different uh, uh, RV park and, and campground, marina, conference rooms, recreational activities, et cetera. Um, so have, being able to, the anticipated savings around those is, is really around saving time um, through error reduction, um, having employees focus their time on higher value higher value work and increasing satisfaction um, from your stakeholders, from uh, your community that would be able to streamline and access these, these online services at their, at their convenience. It also gives you access to, um, to more up-to-date information uh, if, by improving the, the website um, and having better maintainability. Hopefully a key result of that is going to be a reduction in, in calls and in emails and in-person interactions, asking for information that could be readily available to them.
And of course, improving the, in, the user experience increases the overall satisfaction of people working, uh, using the website and finding information. Um, overall, um, we estimated that um, this, this project has the opportunity to have a, a, a savings of a minimum of $12,600 um, annually in terms of time saved by, by, by uh, staff members um, by having an improved uh, information source for online and, and online services for people. Now, I believe that's the end of my question of my of my presentation, and I'd like to open it up, open up the floor to any questions. Do any members of council have any questions for Lisa or Lisa? Council McDonald. Um, I just have a question. Um, it's gonna it's gonna cost a bit of money to get all these items done. Are you guys aware of any like funding opportunities that might be out there that we could use, like Digital Main Street, or do you have any information like that you could pass on to us? Maybe there are there are a number of uh, programs that have been coming out. Um, uh, I would need to get back to you on that one. Um, I don't have uh, one off the top of my head that I can reference. Um, I know the provincial government has been um, supporting a number of these types of projects, um, as especially during uh, during the COVID uh, period, where many of uh, resources had to and organizations had to quickly transition to to digital means. Um, I will have to follow up with you on that and uh, we can provide that information, I guess, uh, um, potentially through Mark. Uh, yeah, that would be helpful if you can pass on yeah. in. Thanks. Yeah. Councillor Tedesco. Um, have you sold this plan to any other municipalities and uh, what's the result been? Uh, we've had the opportunity to work with a number of municipalities. Um, uh, so I've worked with uh, the city of Ottawa in particular. Um, and uh, while they were going through uh, a significant modernization of their of their uh, uh, online service delivery model. Um, and so they were looking at um, different tools that they could use in order to uh, be able to support their services. So they were looking at um, not only their website, but also their CRM systems, um, different tools that are used to support their, their services. And so the way that they approached it was to, um, to have a portal experience that people could log in um, in order to be able to access different different uh, services, and so that allowed them to um, to have a like the community individuals in the community would have their own login um, to be able to see okay this is here's my tax bill and this is what I've I've uh, paid so far these are my dog licenses here's what I've paid so far um, so there's the that's a, a very customized uh, and personalized uh, experience for people um, versus having information through the website and having services that um, people can, uh, can such as um, reservations that may not require a, a login experience, but have are able to complete a transaction um, independent of that. So there's kind of, there's a bit of a spectrum of, uh, of services that you can deliver online, um, depending on how complex and you wanna get and um, the types of services that you would like to, to, to provide. How long ago was this that uh, you did with Ottawa and uh, what the, has the feedback been? Um, we've been working with them for, I want to say close to five years now, um, and so uh, 
so we were um, tackling different parts of their of their online services and the feedback has been been quite good um, and they were able to integrate it with um, uh, part of their larger uh, service Ottawa um, platform. Um, has, does this uh, program, uh, would it interface with uh, provincial and federal uh, authorities where there's going to be a lot of involvement, such as things such as gas tax and uh, property tax and uh, all that sort of thing? Um, I wouldn't anticipate that being the case uh, for, for Red Rock. Um, uh, but we would have to take a look and see what type of information you would want to have on the website that would be pertinent to, to the community. You mentioned that there'd be training opportunities for staff. What about for um, people such as council people? Um, if, if you felt that was necessary, then definitely um, that could, could be included. Um, it's, uh, it just depends on how uh, the information the, that you would want to have um, what information you would need through the training um, in order, it could be to help inform your community. It could be, um, um, uh, depends on, on what role you, you anticipate you would have in maintaining the website. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilor Muir. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, so we, we've got the 10 year strap plan and I was just going through it as you were doing the presentation to see where a new uh, website, updated website falls into it. I mean, it, it, it would hit a few areas there uh, through. Um, I specifically didn't see a spot that said we need a new website, but it would definitely help with a lot of little points. So where would that fall in, into our priority list, I guess, with a new website? Because there's so many benefits to having a new website. The only downfall of getting one is the cost. And that's the only downfall is the cost. Do you have, say, like a class C estimate of what a base uh, municipal website would look like something that could house the policies, procedures, and separate logins for staff. So that could be housed with everything. Do you have a base price that in mind can just be within ten thousand dollars is good. Just ballpark it for us. Um, let me just one second here. I just want to make sure I align with what we had provided in the final report. Second. Um, yeah, so in the in the final report that was sent over, you'll see um, uh, uh, starting on page fifty five. Um, a, a detail of our implementation plan and the um, the anticipated costs um, for each phase of of the of the implementation plan. Um, as we were looking at the the website itself and the design and implementation, it really um, depends on the uh, the vendor and the, the the platform that you you decide to choose. Um, uh, and so it was hard for me to give you a, a, a final estimate, but I would say you're probably um, looking around the probably about the 75 to 100 K if you want a hundred thousand dollars if uh, if you wanted a, a, a login experience as well as a public website. Okay. Thank you for the report. Uh, we, everyone in this room as uh, administration council residents all know that uh, we're lagging with our online services, our experience when you go on the website. So, uh, and we all know that this is phase one, right? The township is uh, heavily uh, runs on government grants. So for us to improve and go to the next stage, we had to get this done, right? And then moving forward, we'll go to phase two. Again, I'm sure administration along with uh, the CDO will be looking for funding so we can provide a, uh, you know, a higher end experience for the residents and uh, administration, obviously, and we want to streamline 
uh, our services, you know, just because everybody else is doing going that way as well. So, Mark. Yeah, and and I just wanted to thank you and stress the fact that uh, as as the mayor said, it is phase one. So what we have is a is a service delivery review. At which point, then, um, if it's if if the review is accepted by council, uh, mm -hmm. then the work starts uh, at our end to to look. I mean, um, into developing or getting prices based on on developing a website as well as looking for funding. This is a key piece to the process because this enables us to reach out for funding. So it's it's kind of stage one and and like I said, uh, a real key component to being able to acquire that funding and move on. It does meet, uh, it, it, it is something that I think is needed for sure, um, but definitely as, as, as Mayor Robinson said, it's, it's, it, it becomes something based around funding. So the, the work will begin after, uh, after the review is, is, is accepted by council. Okay, that being said, is there a mover and seconder for a motion to accept the website and online service review final report from MNP Digital? Councillor Park, Councillor Muir, all in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Thank you, Lisa and Lisa for your presentation and all the work that you've done on this. Great Thank day. you very much. Okay, moving on. Uh, the minutes of the last regular meeting, June 20th, are at items 5.1 of the agenda. Are there any errors or omissions to note of in the minutes? Seeing none, may I have a mover and seconder for a motion to approve the minutes at 5.1? Councillor McDonald, Councillor Tedesco. All in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Okay, hey, first matter is 6.1 is a resolution from other municipalities seeking support. Do members of council have any questions? I don't have a question, but I think we should support them. Okay, I'll read the motions. Is there a mover and seconder for a motion to support the correspondence from the town of Blue Mountains regarding voters list information for candidates? Councillor Muir, Councillor McDonald, all in favor? Four hands rising, one against. Motions carried. Okay, is there a mover and seconder for motion to support the correspondence from the city of Mississauga regarding the Amber Alert system? Councillor Muir, Councillor McDonald. All in favor? All against? Abstaining. Okay, now I actually don't know what to do. It's, it didn't pass. It didn't pass. Okay. So motion's denied. Abstaining. Okay, the next matter, item 6.2, is for information purposes only relating to an update from the NOMA board. Do any members of council have questions? There's lots of work being done. No questions? Okay, moving on. Next item is 6.3 is information purposes only relating to donations to the interpretive center from Superior Country. Do any members of council have any questions? None. Okay, 6.4 is for discussion purposes relating to the 100th anniversary celebration of the OPP Nipigon Detachment. Do any members of council have any questions? 
So we all know everyone's invited if you want. In council, you have to purchase a ticket. If you want to speak, there is. A, they are looking for a donation uh, to help with uh, a few things. Yeah, correct. They are looking for a donation, so it would be um, it would be at, at council's <laughs> direction as to whether they wanted to make that donation to to the event. Um, we uh, they have approached both townships, the township of Red Rock, the township of Nipigon, to participate. We have. Um, we have committed and agreed to the fact that we will participate in in the uh, in the Friday golf tournament, um, if if need be. It could be a donation that council wanted to go down. Uh, as as a municipality, uh, the township of Red Rock, as well as uh, in conjunction with the township of Nipigon and both fire departments, have agreed to to enter teams. Um, so that could be a possible donation if if that's how council wanted to go. But uh, but certainly. Any donation um, is is much appreciated. It is the hundredth anniversary uh, for the OPP. They would like both townships there, so we we will commit to to that and represent the township in that way. Also speaking with the chair of on, of the uh, of the event, they will be touring Nipigon OPP station and then coming and bringing them to the Red Rock Marina and touring the Marina building and the lakefront. So I do have a motion. Uh, is there a mover and seconder for motion? Oh, where am I here? To donate $450 to the Nipigon OPP 100th anniversary celebration. $450 covers the cost of the golf tournament. Is there another amount that we would like to entertain? It is. Yes. I'm not so we have averaged before all the other donations we've made was 250. Is that acceptable? Okay, so I'll read the motion again. Is there a mover and seconder for motion to, do, uh, to donate $250 to the Nipigon OPP 100th anniversary celebration? $250. Where is the money being donated directly to though? Is it to go towards? It's going cost to be cost of, of the event. Cost of the event. Hey, it's bad. I'm not doing it. It's important, but I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not, I, don't, I don't feel as though it's going to get to go from the end. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm not. Well, and, and that's exactly, we, we've committed as, as, as a, we will go to the golf tournament representing the township of Red Rock. One, one way or other, that was, uh, if that's a $100 donation, if it's no donation, I mean, we'll, we'll make that, uh, that decision. So they've reached out, like I said, to, to uh, both municipalities to go. Um, individually, the cost for, for us would be absorbed by us as employees. If that's the case, that's, that's not a problem. We will, we will still represent the, the Township of Red Rock in that capacity. Um, again, the, the question was to council whether, uh, whether you wanted to make a donation to the uh, to the OPP and 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 what they do for our communities based on a hundred year anniversary, so whatever number you're comfortable with, and if that number is 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 zero, if that number is four fifty, we threw that number at there, but we're certainly uh, we're certainly willing at, at the cost of our own to represent the uh, the community in that capacity. So. Councilor Mayor. Yeah, I, I don't. If, if we're committed to the event, then I don't mind the two hundred fifty dollars. As you just going through the, uh, like it doesn't. It's going to cover a meal or whatnot. But again, like if we're committed, we're committed, right? I don't. I don't believe we should make our if, staff if, to go. Obviously, it's contention with the golf tournament. So they were asking funding for uh, to cover busing fees. And, and those type of things. So it could actually go towards uh, that. It doesn't have to go towards golfing, but I, I really do believe we should be supporting them somehow. Yeah. 
So uh, again, consensus before was always 250. So shall I read the motion one more time? Okay, is there a mover and seconder for motion to donate $250 to the Nipkin OPP 100th anniversary celebration? Councillor Muir, Councillor McDonald. All in favor? Three hands rising. Are you against or abstaining? Okay, motion is carried. Next item 6.5, information purposes only relating to the 2022 prescribed burn plan from the Ministry of Northern Development and Mine, Mines. Do any members of council have any questions? Seeing none, it's, uh, they, oh, Councillor McDonald. Sorry, just a quick question. Um, so is there any like residential around this area? I'm not familiar with it. I'm just wondering if like, residentials would be notified this. I'm sure they would, right? I would have to, uh, I'd have to look into that further and get back to you. I'd have to speak with them at uh, Northern Development and Mines and, and, and look into it a little further. I'm, I'm not exactly sure of that answer. Thank you. I'm sure there would be around that area. It is harvested area off the Lofty Davies Road. So it's pretty far back there, but um, they do have to make all those notifications. Okay, next matter 6.6 .6 is information purposes only relating to an update from the Thunder Bay District Services Board. Do any members of the council have any questions? I do oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, is information about the Salmon Derby donation? Do any members of the council have any questions? Councillor Muir. Have we, uh, <clears throat> have we donated before to the Salmon Derby? Any record? I don't believe we have. Okay. Councillor Tedesco. I think uh, Red Rock Indian Band has been supportive of us uh, a number of occasions. Uh, even recently, I would recommend we provide $100 donation. Any other questions or comments before I read a motion? Councilor Mayor? Well, we're consider we're consi usually we donate 250, right? We have been consistent. Yeah, consistent, consistent on that. So then I would say 250. If we're if we're doing two donations tonight, should be, I believe they should be equal. Okay, I'll read the motion. Is there a mover and seconder for motion to donate $250 to the Red Rock Indian Band 2022 Salmon Derby? Councillor Mayor, Councillor Tedesco. All in favor? All hands rising, motions carried. Councillor McDonald, conflict. Okay, next we have Mr. Westerman's report. <laughs> I was just gonna wait for you to start talking. <laughs> Oh. Okay, do any uh, any members of the council have questions of Mr. Westerman's report? Um, Councilor Tedesco. Um, the locates for the, uh, for the water line going to the various things in the park, is there a possibility that perhaps maybe Mark might provide a little bit of pressure to GTEL to Say because it's pretty important. It's going to really affect our waterfront. And yeah, actually, camp. I made a, a call last week and was able to get those locates expedited, and we we've completed that repair already. 
They must be busier than the Dickens. They are G tells behind with a lot of locates and probably because of the fact all the all kinds of projects have been backed up from COVID, right? So they've they've reached out to uh, some local uh, contractors to help with the overlook. Any other questions? It's done. It's done and the repair is complete. We've got we've got water down at the park. So I seen a uh, water main realignment project is done. So uh, we still have lots of work done uh, to do on Upper Brompton. I just have one. Um, I've been receiving quite a few concerns or complaints about uh, the dust because now their work schedule is 10 and four. So there's nobody, uh, when they're working, they, they do put water down. So there's no water being done for the four days and it's been quite hot. So it's uh, very dusty. So if maybe you can pass that on to uh, Again, Makinga. Uh, I, I've done it in the past. Um, I just passed that on to the uh, project mm -hmm. manager from GML and he released that to the contractor. Okay, uh, I did hear that they hired somebody local who might be doing the driving up and down with the water truck. The water so truck oh, I wasn't aware that they were having staffing issues that way. Yeah, so I don't know, but maybe that was just on their four days, but I'll pass you on that information and then. But, oh, uh, oh, this is over the four day, their time off. Uh, I, that's what I'm assuming. I see. Yeah. Because otherwise, I do see one of their one well, of their we'll workers do right. Address that with the contractor. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Mayor. Did uh, anybody get back to uh, the township on the six twenty eight road? Yes, I believe uh, Mark was in contact with somebody recently, and I, I think it was the same person that was supposed to get back to me, but I hadn't received any feedback from them. I don't know. Yeah, that's correct. We've uh, we've touched base initially. Um, I've I've let her know what our concerns are and, and our immediate concerns, uh, being being the main dip on the on the bridge coming in on six twenty eight. Um, I was able to touch base with the with the connection that that I I knew from a previous role that uh, that a new manager had was with uh, Northern Development and Mines is now in, with Ministry of Transportation. So she was able to connect me with, uh, with the, the person responsible for our area. So we should have discussions probably hopefully as early as this week as to, uh, as to at least what our, our immediate needs are. Um, we also feel that there's probably long-term needs there uh, to 628 as well, but um, first and foremost, we'll address the immediate needs. So we have had contact, yes. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Westerman? Seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the report? Councillor Park, Councillor Tedesco. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Thanks, Blair. Next item 8.2 is a report from the fire chief. Do any members of council have questions of Mr. Petrie? So I'll take any of the questions if there is any on uh, on fire on um, Ryan's report tonight. He's uh, he's at a training session. Councillor Tedesco. Um, there's a comment on the update of fire deep department emergency contact list. I assume that's the uh, integration of all the uh, emergency services, such as police, fire, uh, ambulance services and all that. Um, I'm really nervous about our communities in general because of forest fires and all the other things that happen. Um, hopefully that list is really updated and uh, easy to access. Yeah, I, I can follow up with uh, with Chief Petrie on that, but uh, I mean, it is it is something that we require under our emergency management plan to update the list frequently. So, um, but I can certainly uh, I can certainly follow up with him. But what I would say is, um, I would 
I would I would assure you that uh, he's on top of updating those lists. Yeah, I'm sure too. Yeah. And the other thing, if I may, um, Project Zero smoke alarms and combo alarms. I really, I've used that system uh, that's provided by the municipality through the fire department. I really highly endorse that. And I hope to God that we support that to, as much as we can, because if we can prevent fires in our homes uh, and carbon monoxide, uh, that's a very, very important thing. Uh, also perform, uh, there's a comment, perform the fire inspection at the Nipigon Museum. That seems to be a little bit out of our line, isn't it? Nipigon Museum. Um, again, I, I would follow up uh, with him on that. Um, I'll, I'll handle those questions. I'll, I'll certainly get you an answer on that. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what what that would entail or why that would happen, other than the fact that I mean, it might be tied in to the fact that uh, that we are working closely with Nipigon now. Yeah. We are sharing a fire chief uh, as of July 1st uh, of this year. I. Don't know if that's related prior to this report, um, and I doubt it being uh, being the dates, but it very well could be. Um, but I'll definitely follow up. It might be something that uh, that uh, we do um, on behalf of each community, where where uh, we would have to inspect uh, some of their infrastructure and vice versa. It could be that as well. But I'll certainly get you an answer, Mark. I think that's exactly what I read into it. That it was probably a mutual aid. Uh, working uh, between the two communities. And, uh, I think that's an excellent thing for us to be doing. Uh, congratulations to, to uh, Ryan for doing this good report. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the report? Councillor Park, Councillor McDonald. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Next item 8.3 is a report on administrative activity. Do any members of council have questions of Mr. Figueroa? Oh, yep, sorry, I forgot that. So we did have somebody resign from the fire department. So is there a mover and seconder? For motion to accept the resignation of Mr. Kyle Arps from the Red Rock fire, fire Department with regrets. Councillor Muir, Councillor Park. All in favor? All in the rising motion is carried. Thanks. I checked it off, Dave. <laughs> okay, now 8.3. Report on administrative activity. Do any members of council have any questions of Mr. Figuini? Councilor Mayor. Uh, Mark, are you able to give us just a brief on the asset management plan, how, how things are going there? Yes, for sure. The asset management plan projected right now is, is due to be um, a presentation to council at our next meeting. So uh, we're very close to completing a few pieces, last minute pieces to the plan. Um, we're, we're far enough into it now that most of our data is entered um, at that level, we're in the financial piece now and projected right now, they will be a delegation to present to council. Uh, and I believe the date sets that third weekend in, or third Monday in August. So the 15th um, is, is when we should see that at the council. Um, I'm not sure yet how uh, they'll be either into a, to a Zoom session, uh, similar to what we had this evening and or live. I haven't got that far in the discussion yet. We're uh, we're supposed to meet again this coming Thursday to put some of the final pieces together. There was some in-service dates they needed based around, uh, I believe it was our bleeder shacks, uh, Blair, and then some financial information. Uh, and, and then we'll tie that together. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, is there a mover and seconder for motion to receive the report? Councilor Mayor, Councilor McDonald. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Okay, there is no new business. Okay, 
Okay, next item is a bylaw to confirm proceedings of council. Can I have a mover and seconder for motion to pass the bylaw? Councillor Tedesco. Councillor Park. All in favor? All hands rising, motion is carried. Time being 7.56, I'd like to call this meeting uh, adjourned. Thank you.